Have you ever sliced an apple, set it down for just a few minutes, and then come back to find that the once crisp white flesh has turned an unappetizing shade of brown? It's one of those small, everyday mysteries we've all encountered. You wash the apple, cut it carefully, maybe even admire how fresh it looks, and then suddenly, it feels like the apple is aging right before your eyes. It doesn't smell bad, it doesn't feel rotten, but visually, something has clearly changed. This simple moment often leads to a bigger question we rarely stop to think about. Why do apples turn brown when you slice them? Today, we will answer that right here on History of Simple Things. To understand what's happening, it helps to think of an apple as a carefully sealed package. When an apple is whole, its skin acts like a natural protective barrier. Inside, the cells are neatly organized, and different substances are kept separate from one another. The moment you cut into the apple, that barrier is broken. You're not just slicing fruit, you're opening up thousands of tiny plant cells that were never meant to be exposed to open air. Once that happens, a quiet chemical reaction begins almost immediately. At the center of this reaction is oxygen, the same invisible gas we breathe every second. Oxygen is incredibly reactive, which means it loves to interact with other substances. When you slice an apple, oxygen from the air rushes in and meets compounds inside the fruit that were previously hidden away. This meeting sets off a process called oxidation. Oxidation is the same basic process that causes metal to rust. Although in apples, it happens in a much gentler and less destructive way. But oxygen alone isn't the whole story. Apples contain a natural enzyme called polyphenol oxidase. Enzymes are like tiny biological machines that speed up chemical reactions. When the apple is intact, this enzyme is safely tucked away inside the cells separated from oxygen. Cutting the apple allows the enzyme and oxygen to finally come into contact. Once they do, the enzyme gets to work, triggering a reaction with certain natural compounds in the apple known as polyphenols. As this reaction unfolds, the polyphenols change their chemical structure they transform into new compounds that eventually link together to form pigments called melanins. These melanins are what give the apple its brown color. Interestingly, melanins are not unique to apples. They're also responsible for the color of human skin and hair. In apples, though, their appearance is less about beauty and more about chemistry responding to injury. From the apple's perspective, browning is actually a defense mechanism. In nature, when a fruit or plant is damaged, it becomes vulnerable to bacteria, fungi, and insects. The browning reaction helps create a less inviting environment for these threats. The compounds produced during browning can taste bitter and may slow down the growth of microbes. So while we see browning as a flaw, the apple sees it as a form of protection. Not all apples brown at the same speed, and you've probably noticed this without realizing it. Some apple slices seem to turn brown almost instantly, while others stay pale for much longer. This difference comes down to the apple variety. Different types of apples contain different levels of polyphenols and enzymes. Apples with higher levels tend to brown more quickly, while those with lower levels take longer to change color. That's why a Granny Smith might behave differently from a Red Delicious once sliced. Temperature also plays a role in how fast apples turn brown. Chemical reactions generally happen faster at warmer temperatures. If you leave apple slices out on a warm kitchen counter, Browning will happen more quickly than if you store them in the refrigerator. Cooling the apple slows down the enzyme's activity, 
giving you a little more time before the color change becomes noticeable. This is why chilled fruit often looks fresher for longer. Water can affect browning as well, although its effect is temporary. When you submerge apple slices in water, you limit their exposure to oxygen. With less oxygen available, the browning reaction slows down. However, once you take the slices out of the water and expose them to air again, the process resumes. It's a short-term solution rather than a permanent fix, but it shows just how important oxygen is in this reaction. Acidity is another key factor. The enzyme responsible for browning doesn't work as well in acidic environments. That's why people often use lemon juice on apple slices. Lemon juice is acidic, and it also contains vitamin C, which acts as an antioxidant. Antioxidants help prevent oxidation by reacting with oxygen before it can interact with other substances. When you coat apple slices with lemon juice, you're essentially slowing down the chemical reaction that leads to browning. Vitamin C on its own plays an interesting role here. Apples naturally contain some vitamin C, but not enough to stop browning completely. When the apple is cut, the vitamin C is quickly used up as it reacts with oxygen. Once it's gone, the enzyme-driven browning process takes over. Adding extra vitamin C from citrus juice or other sources helps extend the time before browning becomes visible. It's important to note that a brown apple is not necessarily a bad apple. Browning doesn't mean the fruit is spoiled or unsafe to eat. In most cases, it's purely a cosmetic change. The texture might become slightly softer over time, and the flavor can shift a little. But a browned apple is generally still fine to eat. Our brains, however, are strongly influenced by appearance, and brown fruit often triggers the idea that something has gone wrong. So the next time you slice an apple and watch it slowly turn brown, you'll know there's more going on than meets the eye. You're witnessing a natural chemical reaction, driven by oxygen, enzymes, and the apple's own built-in defense system. What seems like a flaw is actually the result of a very clever biological process responding to change. Understanding why apples turn brown doesn't just make you smarter in the kitchen. It gives you a new appreciation for how living things interact with their environment, even after they've been picked from a tree. That simple color change tells a story about chemistry, survival, and the invisible reactions shaping our everyday experiences. And once you see it that way, even a slightly browned apple feels a little more interesting than before. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.